Hi, Curtis in Seattle here. I'm going to be talking about my Ravelli Francesca pellet stove that I purchased new in December of 2017. It has 4,512 hours on it now after about four years. And um, we're going to talk about the issues that I've had with it and also how to clean it. Um, the daily cleaning was long along with the weekly cleaning. I think later I'll do the deep cleaning and put that on a YouTube video. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about filling it because it does have quite a small hopper to fill. And we'll open that up here and let's take a look. Right now it's full of pellets, but it holds about two thirds of a bag. And if you try to pour a bag of pellets in there, you'll have half of them on the floor. So uh, I actually use a coal hod and a little thrift store mixing bowl to, to fill it. We'll talk more about that. So of the four issues that I've had with my pellet stove, um, I've replaced the burn pot at 3,900 hours. It actually started cracking, I believe at about 2,500, and I just let it continue to grow the cracks until I replaced it. Uh, this is this uh, burn pot's been sandblasted to clean it up so it's a little, little easier to see but uh, you can see it's got quite a few cracks in it um, the inside actually looks pretty good um, it is a little pitted from use but otherwise it looks fairly good that way um, it's about a hundred dollars to buy one of these new, so I'm not really too happy about that. Okay, so the next thing which just happened was the airflow sensor. This is the, the bad airflow sensor, the screen part here. It's a circuit board with some resistors on it. And this senses the airflow in the input pipe uh, by having a temperature differential across these two um, sets of resistors here. And uh, this rubber piece um, came with the new one, but it doesn't really, it fits my stove, but my particular mount has uh, two screws on it. And um, so I chose to just use the existing mount. And uh, in doing so, it was actually quite easy to replace it. I cut the zip tie that was around the pipe in that round hole. There's also a zip tie around that raceway and around this one over here where my thumb is. Uh, so three zip ties and then two screws in the, the mount that's on the stove. The only, I only had to cut the one zip tie and I pulled the, the circuit board out and unplugged the plug and plugged the new one back in. And uh, it immediately started working again uh, on high mode and uh, with no issues. So the stove is off right now, but you can see the temperature sensor, the TDEB, I think that stands for Dedimeter. Um, the temperature of the, the, the upper temperature, when you see it flash back there, will be about, what, 136 degrees Fahrenheit, 134, and 60 degrees Fahrenheit on the lower temperature. When the uh, stove went into an 06, I'm sorry, an 09 air sensor error, and uh, what happens is it beeps at you about every 20 minutes, and then the stove will only run in, in low mode, the lowest mode. Um, still runs, still heats, but um, I use this as my primary source of heat, so that uh, wasn't going to fly for me. So I looked online, and I found where people say it needs to be cleaned, and if it's not working after that, replace it. So I cleaned it twice, I still had the air, and then I replaced it. So I'll show you where the airflow sensor is. Uh, I pulled off the ceramic top, and I've opened the hopper the pellet hopper and you need to remove this bolt right here and this bolt and then this whole side lifts off. The side panel was removed with a 5 16 inch socket. There's the two screws and the airflow sensor is down here kind of inside in the back. It's that red piece that's a red rubber piece and uh, the very first time I removed that I took the two black bolts out that you see there 
and there were three black zip ties around those, cut them all off, pulled it out, cleaned it with alcohol, and uh, reassembled it. It worked for, I think, one firing before I had the 09 air sensor error again. And then I uh, pulled it out again, but just by cutting the center zip tie and pulling the board out, cleaned it again with alcohol, um, unplugged it, cleaned it with alcohol, and then reinstalled it. And it worked intermittently. Um, it would come on and I'd get the airflow sensor air. And then after a little while, it would go away and the stove would go back, back onto high. And then maybe an hour later, it'd go into 09 airflow sensor error mode. So I, um, at that point, I took the stove completely apart and cleaned it and uh, even took the fire X out of the inside of the firebox there. The fire X is that uh, brick looking stuff back there and used pipe cleaners and I cleaned all the galleries inside of it and I took the fan out and I cleaned that and I cleaned the flue and uh, first time I fired it up it worked I thought maybe I had a blockage and the next time I fired it up I had the air again so I replaced the sensor got one online for $58 and a week later, installed it, and it's been working great ever since. Okay, so I'm going to be talking a little bit here about uh, what my daily routine is when I come out in the morning and start the Ravelli pellet stove. And I, I do, uh, first thing I do is I, I grab a flashlight, and I look down in the burn pot here, and I look for any chunks of pellets or to see how much ash or if there's any blocked holes. And uh, right now I see a couple of holes that are slightly blocked, so... Uh, I'm going to go into mode number two, and uh, but here regardless, I always scrape the the um, air tubes, and you use the door opening tool to pull that out, pull it out, give it three or four tugs, and uh, then I usually let the there's always a little bit of dust that comes out of that. It gets past the, the burn plate up there, and I let it sit for a while so it doesn't come into the room. Um, and then I use this to open the door. And uh, I, sometimes I, I clean the glass. Um, after I'm done cleaning the inside of this out a little bit and scraping the burn pot, but I think I'll show you that in what I call my weekly cleaning. So the first thing I do is basically just get rid of the ash that's accumulated on this grate here, being very careful not to damage the fire X. I just do that because if you don't do that, it builds up and you get this this ring around here and it keeps building up about an inch high. And then, of course, scrape the burn pot. Now, this is a cast iron burn pot. I, I know that I've seen online where if you have a stainless steel burn, spot, burn pot, you shouldn't scrape it. And get it nice and clean. And take another look at it with my flashlight. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. And uh, one thing that I wanted to point out was um, that you'll see that there it looks like it's clean around this edge right here, or maybe there's some pieces missing. And um, there actually are pieces missing. And uh, the reason for that is I believe the pellets are hitting that. I'm really careful with the Fire X. I don't rub it with the, the vacuum or um, hit it with the scraper. So I really think it's the pellets hitting it. And when they come in, sometimes they bounce off the burn pot and then go back and hit the Fire X. And just over 4,500 hours, it's knocked a few pieces off. Uh, it's not bad. Um, when I removed the Fire X block out of the back, when I did a deep cleaning a few months ago, uh, the Fire X is a good uh, inch and a half to three, well, inch and three quarters thick. So um, 
I do plan on replacing the Fire X in the back because it has a crack. And I'll be able to show you that better when I do the weekly cleaning. Okay, it's time for a weekly cleaning. And uh, we'll go ahead and start that. Now this stove has been sitting for almost 12 hours without being turned on. And uh, it's stone cold. Normally when I do a weekly cleaning, it's probably been off for... Uh, 16 to 18 hours. Um, I do use a vacuum cleaner that has a plastic base, but that vacuum cleaner is dedicated to only cleaning the stove, and uh, I empty it quite frequently. And uh, really, the only thing you're picking up out of here is ash. Um, so I realize that in the comments, I'm going to get somebody that says I shouldn't be using a plastic vacuum, and I realize that. So don't use one. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is open the door. Okay, so now we just need to take out the um, ash pan and empty that outside and then vacuum the inside out as well, down below. So, usually the ash pan is, is a lot fuller than this, but it's only been, I think, about four days since I've cleaned it. So, we'll go ahead and empty this outside. Okay, now we're going to get the ash out of the sides of the uh, ash pan tray area here. Okay, to clean the glass, I use two half sheets of paper towels. These are Kirkland brand. Any paper towel would probably work. You don't want to use any cleaning agents on here. No Windex, nothing. All you need is a damp paper towel. And wipe the glass. And it gets dirty, and sometimes it's even dirtier than that. And then I hold it over and I wipe it again. And then I take the other paper towel that just has just, just ever so slight a couple drips of water on it. And I wipe the whole thing again. And you see it's got a little bit on it. And then I like to burnish it with the drier, the driest area of the paper towel. And sometimes you'll even get off a little bit more. Didn't get anything off that time. So if you clean it this way, when you fire it up, you won't see any streaks. And uh, you don't need to use any cleaning, agent, any cleaning agents at all. In fact, I highly recommend that you don't. So as I said, there was a couple issues with the stove that I haven't corrected. And one of them is the Fire X, which is this brick in the back here. It's got a crack and the crack is right there. It's probably really hard to see and uh, with all the shadows and stuff. And uh, when you first fire it up, that crack gets bigger, and that's very visible. And then as it heats up, the crack goes away. Or should I say it closes up? The other issue is up here, the mount 
for the um, for the uh, baffle, the the firebox baffle. It's starting to get eaten away by the smoke and whatever else make, comes in contact with it. So at some point in time, I'm going to have to replace that. But that edge is starting to thin down, and uh, in one area of it, where the baffle sits, it's uh, about half the thickness. Okay, so it's time to reassemble the stove. Um, I've cleaned the the burn pot um, out with some soap water and a scratch pad, and uh, I'm drying that. I put that on the stove burner, turn it on just till I start hearing some of the water sizzle, and then I turn it off and I just leave it on there, and um, I'm able to pick it up by hand and then reinstall it. Um, it's cast iron, so if you if you left it wet, it would definitely rust significantly. So that's the best way I know how to keep it from rusting. So the baffle goes inside and, and it sits on this surface in the back and this surface in the front. Um, it actually sits up like this, um, this direction here. And uh, so you just have to uh, fool around with it. You can't really see up in there too well, so you just try to just kind of put it in and uh, get it to sit in there. Okay, so it's in. And uh, I'll get the burn pot now that it's dry on the stove, and I'll put that in, put the ash pan back in. And uh, then I'll close up the stove. So the burn pot's dry, and uh, you can see there's a little bit of stuff inside. It's not terrible. Um, it looks a little corroded on the bottom. Um, bottom looks pretty good. It's not cracked at all yet. Uh, all right, time to close it up. We're all done. So I wanted to show you what I use to transfer the, the pellets, which you see stacked over here. I store about 20 to 25 bags of pellets here. Um, the local hardware store uh, down in Ording, they, uh, they sell you a whole pallet of pellets and then you can go pick up a few bags at a time or 20 bags at a time, whatever you want. And uh, so what I found is that the, the, the best way to fill the coal hod, which is this right here, it's a bucket with a spout on it, is to have a, a bin. And this I found this online, it's called High Country Plastics. Um, it's one of their feed bins and it works great. It's really the only thing that I saw online in the US that will work. I saw some like over in Europe and over in England, but really this is the cat's meow. Um, it holds seven bags of pellets. Right now there's about, I'm guessing a bag in there, maybe one bag. You can kind of see the outline of the pellets there through the, the bottom and uh, maybe even less than a bag. But it lasts for about three to four weeks. So, so I come in here and uh, spend 15 minutes or so dumping the pellets in here and close the lid. And then it's uh, ready for a whole month. It takes just a couple of minutes to um, fill the coal hod. And uh, that includes putting your shoes on. So there it is, it's ready to go. Hi, so we're gonna load some pellets into the Rebelli pellet stove. And uh, it's got kind of a small hopper lid. So I'll just show you the way that I found this is the best way to do it. So we'll open the hopper here. You can see it's a little low on pellets. And uh, what I do is I use a uh, mixing bowl I got from the thrift store to put a few scoops of pellets in until the coal hod is about two-thirds full and then after that I can just dump them straight in otherwise they tend to 
fall all over the floor on the back of the stove or fall on top of the heat exchanger in there and then they start to smell a little bit hey thanks for watching um i thought i'd also just kind of leave you with um you know i bought this pellet stove because my house doesn't have any ducting and it was all electric and it was expensive to heat and uh, i kind of traded this against a, a propane uh, freestanding stove and uh, i ended up choosing this i thought it would be a little cheaper after i did some research um, but i will say that pellet stoves uh, are quite a bit of work um, there's a lot of uh, cleaning and maintenance and uh, i was actually surprised that there's as many repairs as i've needed to do so quickly uh, next time hopefully i'll sh i'll talk more about uh, um, the deep cleaning where we'll take both side panels off and the front cover here we'll take that off get into an access panel and suck out all of the the ash that's down below and uh, we'll take out the fire x and uh, then use some pipe cleaners or uh, bottle brushes actually and clean all of the galleries inside uh, the stove and it takes quite a bit of time and uh, i need to put drop cloths down and so uh, that's probably going to be a few months maybe even towards the end of the winter um, but until then thanks for watching bye